job. What was the job you wanted to be when you were growing up? I, I'm a, as I said, I'm a curious cat. I like to do a lot of different things. So I went through very various different phases. Um, the earliest thing I can remember trying to be was a soldier. I really wanted really? to like protect and serve and do all that kind of stuff. And I loved guns and uh, I don't have a gun, but as a kid, I had a lot of toy guns, which I used to play mm -hmm. with plastic things. Uh, so that was a big thing until I think I got to my teenage years. And then I did the standard thing of wanting to be a rock star, uh, joined a band, had a guitar, all of that stuff. Um, I didn't grow my hair long cause, uh, not, <laughs> not very silky. <laughs> but that was my dream for a while and then of course uh, I got to the real world of realizing that I am not a very talented person when it comes to guitar and uh, vocals it needs a lot of work and uh, yeah highly competitive and there's actually not a lot of money to be made uh, if you're not in the top 0.1 percent oh so, you're so right so that, that kind of killed that. And then it was software. And then as I got into software, I had a great mentor uh, when I came to the US in the University of Toledo called, uh, his name is Dr. Mezba Ahmed. He's retired now, but he, uh, he really went above and beyond on how he was training students to be like employment ready right off the bat. And he had us do some really like deep stuff and do research. And I actually helped him uh, do some studies and research and co-authored, not really co-authored, but uh, helped him write the book that he published on Microsoft.net and other things like that, wow. which, which then really helped me get placed as an intern, which was my first job. And I'm sure you'll be curious about that story. Was oh, I am. Yeah. <laughs> this was, I came in 1999, by the way. And uh, so that was right when the dot-com boom was taking off. I mean, it was crazy. Everything was like, we had my roommates came in and they did them. They were super motivated. Like these are mm -hmm. highly motivated individuals who come in and it's really hard and competitive to get to the U S if you're uh, an Indian student, because it's very, everybody wants to come here. So these guys placed really well and they finished their master's degree by taking like six courses a semester. They would finish their master's degree in nine months. Wow. And they would just crush it and they'd be working nonstop, staying at school and whatever. And they would graduate and they were getting like 80 at the time. It was a lot of money. Now it's still a lot of money, but at the time going from practically no income and making like 400, 500 bucks a month to $85,000 jobs with a $10,000 signing bonus. And it would go straight to the West coast. Wow. So that's what I, I mean, I came in there. I'm like, Oh, this is crazy. Like this can't be real. And like, I'm seeing, all my people who came in before me, like they're just going and getting these really awesome jobs. And I was like, okay, I'm switching to software. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had actually done my bachelor's in mechanical engineering and I worked for three years with my dad and his business, but I didn't really enjoy it. And he sent me over here. I thought I was going to be here for a couple of years and go back uh, and help him with his business. I came here to do my manufacturing management, but I, you know, I had done a couple of software courses. So it wasn't, I wasn't a complete stranger to software. And it was actually something I was good at uh, when I did my courses. So it wasn't that hard a transition for me to move into software. But my bad luck when I graduated in 2000, that's when the crash happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the whole dot-com bust happened and uh, there was not that many jobs available. And I actually stuck around. I did a second master's because I didn't find a job. And if you don't have a job as an immigrant, you have to go back. Uh, it's really hard. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, so I stuck around, did a second master's just to extend my period of waiting for the economy to come back up because you know, some of my friends who went to California actually had to go back home because they were fired from their or laid off from their jobs and um, all of that. It's expensive to sponsor a person to have them stay here. So it's like anywhere from $7,500 to $10,000 for citizenship. And you got to really say that person's bringing huge value to say, oh yeah, I'm gonna spend it and make that part of their salary package essentially. Yeah, yeah, it is expensive. And it's, you know, uh, we, if you don't have a job and you don't have a employer that's willing to sponsor. And at that time it was even much harder than it is now because that was still very new in the late nineties and early 2000s. Mm -hmm. uh, and the quotas were much smaller too. So it was very hard. And so I stuck around, did another master's. I did an MBA in information systems. And that, and by the time I graduated from that, uh, I, was, I, I was actually um, had an internship lined up. So that was able to keep me for a few months 
which then converted into a full-time position. And I was always engaged with the community. That's just something that I love to do anyway. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, right off the bat, there was a .NET user group there that um, was founded by somebody who uh, was part of University of Toledo at the time. And then he ended up making me the vice president of that user group when I was a student and as an intern. And so that got me a lot of visibility and that got me the full-time position I was looking for. Oh, that's good. Hey, would you be able to, as I don't know the answer to this question, and I don't know if you do, um, I'd have to talk to an attorney probably, but if you come here and you start a business and then your business takes off, would that allow you to stay here because now you have a job, you fired yourself? Nope, you can't do that. No, that's too bad. Yeah, uh, you can uh, You can start a business and mm-hmm. you can get... Um, equity in a business, like you can buy a percentage of a company because that's what you're doing with stocks, right? So if you're right. here, you can buy stocks, which is percentage equity of a particular company, but right. you cannot get a salary from that com- company. You can only get um, dividends, which means you cannot be an employee in your own company. Oh man, that's horrible. Yeah. So you'd have to have, I'm trying to think of like the loophole, not the loophole, the the legal way that it could be done is have a U.S. citizen that would hire you and then you would be able to get hired that way. So a co-founder that's a U.S. citizen. Right, right. Yeah. So when we started the company, uh, my co-founder was a U.S. citizen, but I wasn't an employee. So I had to uh, basically just be an, an owner, but I couldn't be an employee. I couldn't get a salary from my own company. Oh, wow. That is because legally you're not allowed to. Correct. Legally, you're only allowed to work with one employer uh, as depends on your status classification. But uh, as an H1 employee, which is where most people are, H1B Uh does not let you um, get a salary from any other place apart from your single employer who authorized your work. Right. And OPT is also one of those other terms that they use. And you're also not allowed to, you know, be able to take any money. And one of the students that was. uh, Oh, you can. can. Uh, The OPT, uh, you can get a salary from anybody, actually. You can. Really? Yeah. You can get whatever job you want, but that's only for one year, I believe. Right. But it's only for one year, but you can take. um, It's considered an employment authorization document and you can work for anybody. I thought it was that they had to do one year unpaid and then they could go and do the second year where they are paid, but they had to find a job within that two year timeframe. Well, I don't want, I don't want to speak as a lawyer or anything, but um, that wasn't the case when I was, when I was a student and I got paid as an intern. Yeah. Oh, well, that was good. Well, you're brilliant. So you should have been. Okay. (laughs) So uh your educational back well you already covered that my dad was a mechanical engineer very quirky personality you have a lot more personality than my dad so i would not have believed that you were a software engineer or honestly a mechanical engineer yeah i've i've i've, been, I've done engineering business software so uh, as you know uh i like i like dabbling in things oh yeah 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 